Buckle Carcinoma by ENT students. Buckle mucosa covers large area. It extends from the meeting point of the lips in the front to the pterygomandibular raphe behind and from the gingivo buccal sulcus to the lower one. Carcinoma of the buccal mucosa is very common. Its incidence is, uh, is next only to the tongue cancer, equally seen in both the sexes. Site of origin. Most common site is the angle of mouth or the line of occlusion of the upper and the lower teeth. It may also arise from the buccal sulcus where fauna or tobacco quite escaped as the whole of buccal mucosa is affected. Carcinoma may be multicentric, gross appearance, lesion may be exophytic or ulcero infiltrative, Exo- exophytic type may be associated with erythral leukoplegia. Buccal mucosa is also the mostly common site for varicose carcinoma which is a wide papillary growth with considerable keratinization local spread from its site of origin the region may spread deeply involving submucosa muscle subcutaneous fat and skin tumor may spread radially from its site of origin and involve angle of mouth and lip anteriorly retromolar trigone and medial pterygoid upper gingivo bulb uh, buccal sulcus and maxilla superiorly lower gingivo buccal sulcus and alveolar ridge and gums inferiorly lymphatic spread nodal involvement occurs in about 50 percent cases submandibular and the later the upper jugular nodes may get involved upper jugular node may also be involved directly skipping the submandibular group Clinical features. The lesion are asymptomatic in the earlier stage. Pain and bleeding are seen when lesions are ulcerative and invade deeply. Involvement of vaccinator, masseter and pterygoid muscles cause trismus. Fungating mass over the cheek or foul smelling bleeding or mass in the oral cavity are the late features. Histological type. Squamous cell carcinoma is the most common type. Tumors can also arise from the minor salivary glands with histology as seen in salivary gland tumors. Investigation to be done are biopsy of the lesion for histo- histological type of growth, C- computed tomography scan for the involvement of the bone and the extension to the infratemporal fossa. Treatment involves tre- uh, stage one. In stage one, surgical excision is to be done. In stage 2, radiotherapy to primary lesion and also notes if bone is not involved. If none is involved or growth infiltrates the muscle or surgery is the treatment of the choice. It involves excision of the growth, marginal or segmental mandibulectomy of the area with skin or mucosal flaps. In the stage 3 and 4, surgical resection, reconstruction with skin and myocutaneous flaps and post-operative th- radiotherapy to the site of lesion and nodes. Surgical resection is combined with neck dissection if nodes are clinically pa- palpable.